Well, the World Expo in general um, is uh, considered as a mega event uh, for a global audience. Sort of like the Olympics, like the FIFA World Cup, uh, they uh, draw worldwide attention. Uh, but the Expo is different from uh, those two sporting events in that uh, the Expo uh, is to be experienced in person. So there is this uh, uh, special uh, character of the World Expo uh, that appeals to the sense of conviviality of people that people wanted to get together. And, uh, and so that really separates uh, the World Expo from other mega events. And in that sense that, uh, you know, when we talk about public diplomacy as an engagement with the broader public, and it's a direct engagement, so World Expo is a very important uh, platform for that. Um, secondly, uh, this World Expo is uh, particularly important in the sense that this is the first time uh, in the Expo's history uh, to have this event to take place in the Middle East. Uh, because of uh, the location of the, the host city, um, the Expo is going to draw uh, a very large uh, you know, international audience uh, from the region, but also from nearby regions. So in that sense, um, the Expo, uh, this one, uh, is uh, significant uh, for public diplomacy uh, considerations and purposes. And uh, we may add another sort of factor to all of this, uh, which is the pandemic, uh, which is, uh, you know, the pandemic has forced everybody uh, into social isolation, um, social distancing for quite a long time. And so this is kind of first time for many people to come out and to gather, uh, to be in person with other people. And I think that's very meaningful uh, in, in the sense that uh, people are, you know, recovering the sense of place, uh, recovering the sense of space that the World Expo provides. Yeah, so the Expo, the, the way you know, it's presented, uh, primarily through uh, the national pavilions. And these national pavilions are cultural spaces or are spaces of innovation. And the way countries uh, have been approaching designing these spaces, um, in many ways, uh, are not that different how other types of spaces are being designed, whether it's for commercial purposes or for any other purposes. So we can certainly consider uh, the national pavilions uh, as branded space, uh, a space to engage uh, the public on, you know, on culture, on cultural offerings, you know, on um, innovation uh, explorations. And, uh, and, and there are many tools uh, for us to convey the so-called the brand of the nation through architecture, through design, through exhibits, uh, through uh, even cuisine. Uh, many uh, pavilions uh, provide restaurants. And of course, and also through these direct interactions, and I think the USA Pavilion provides a perfect example through our youth ambassador program. Uh, you know, the, these youth ambassadors uh, greet uh, visitors and in a way that uh, provide this direct encounter, uh, direct uh, contact uh, without, in, uh, without uh, uh, visitors. And, uh, and in public diplomacy uh, speech, we call this the last three feet, uh, which is uh, the, the critical uh, aspect of uh, how we need to uh, carry out our public diplomacy uh, activities. So this expo, um, as I was saying earlier, it's the first time uh, to take place in the Middle East. Of course, uh, for the host city, for the host nation, uh, this is a major uh, public diplomacy endeavor. And I think as uh, you know, the geostrategic uh, position of the UAE evolves, uh, this becomes a very important um, um, uh, event, uh, a platform uh, for, for them to uh, to show it's uh, what the country has to offer, uh, not just to the visitors, uh, you know, uh, in the region, but also visitors from uh, different parts of the world, and it is a, a very important, um, you know, platform to elevate uh, the country's visibility. But of course, for you know other nations uh, through the national pavilions, uh, they engage uh, this very broad, this uh, a very international uh, 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 audience. Uh, through, you know, different uh, strategies, uh, whether you wanted to engage primarily based on the culture, 
or primarily based on innovations or a combination of all of these. And, uh, and some countries um, you know, focus uh, very specifically on certain aspect uh, of uh, what they have to offer, how they want to connect uh, with the audiences, while others uh, take a very, very broad approach. So uh, since this is still the second month uh, of the expo, that uh, it will be very interesting to see as this uh, expo unfolds, uh, how these countries um, are achieving uh, their public diplomacy goals with the audiences, uh, not only just from uh, the UAE, the region, but also uh, visitors from uh, the other parts of the world. So far, my observation is uh, this one, uh, for now, uh, it draws primarily uh, from the UAE and from the region, but also we are seeing uh, quite a lot of uh, you know, t uh, visitors from Europe. And uh, it, it appears to me uh, the younger, um, many you know, young families with kids. And I think that may not be a, a, a coincidence uh, because it reflects the sort of the demographic composition uh, of the region. And so it's a much younger population. And, uh, and of course the visitors, you know, this today compared to uh, visitors uh, five years ago or 10 years ago, uh, they're all armed with smartphones. So, uh, and, and how they're gonna use uh, these digital tools um, as part of their visit, uh, it'd be very interesting for us to see. Uh, that how's that how that's integrated uh, in their experience uh, on the expo ground. <laughs>